Hi, this is Brendan from Watto Training, and in this tutorial we take a look at third-party evidence. The sources of information for this tutorial are found on the ASQA website. To inform a judgment about whether a learner has achieved competency, a registered training organisation must gather a range of evidence of the learner's competence. Evidence is information which, when matched against a unit of competency or module, provides proof of competency. Evidence can take many forms and be gathered from a number of sources. There are generally three types of evidence, direct, indirect, or supplementary evidence. Direct evidence is evidence that can be observed or witnessed by the assessor. This could include observation of workplace performance, oral questioning, demonstration, and or challenge test. Indirect evidence is evidence of a candidate's work that can be reviewed or examined by the assessor. This could include finished products, written assignments or tests, or a portfolio of previous work performed. Supplementary evidence is additional evidence presented to assessors to support a candidate's claim of competence. This could include reports from supervisors, colleagues and or clients, testimonials from employers, work diaries or evidence of training. It is important to understand that when it comes to assessment, there is no hierarchy of evidence. While training packages and accredited courses describe the outcomes of assessment and provide advice about the scope and context of for assessment, neither the standards for RTOs 2015 nor training product guidelines prescribe exactly what type of evidence or how much evidence must be collected. Evidence must be gathered from a variety of sources in accordance with an RTO's strategies for training and assessment. The evidence is then assessed to determine whether an individual can perform to the standard expected in the workplace as expressed in the relevant endorsed unit of competency or module. Assessment of evidence and judgment about competency must be undertaken by a person who meets the specific requirements for an assessor in the Standards for Registered Training Organisations 2015. In some cases, an assessor cannot directly gather all the required evidence that supports a competency judgment. In these cases, the evidence may be gathered or reported by other people. This type of evidence is categorised as supplementary evidence. A person collecting third-party evidence is not conducting an assessment. It remains the role of the RTO assessor to make the judgment about whether competency has been achieved. An RTO does not require a written agreement to collect third-party evidence. An RTO must reach an appropriate balance and ensure that overall the evidence collected meets the rules of evidence. Validity. The evidence presented demonstrates the learner has the skills, knowledge and attributes as described in the module or unit of competency and associated assessment requirements. Sufficiency. The quality, quantity and relevance of evidence presented enables a judgment to be made of a learner's competency. Currency. The evidence presented is from either the present or the very recent past and Authenticity. The evidence presented for assessment is the learner's own work. The quality of all evidence collected, including supplementary evidence collected by another party, is the key to making a sound judgment about competence, rather than the type, sorry, quantity, type, and form of evidence, where it was collected or who it or who collected it. When and why might an assessor use other parties to collect evidence? Involving another party in the collection of evidence allows assessors to gather authentic and valid evidence in difficult circumstances in a low-cost way. Sorry, cost-effective way. It is common to use another party for evidence gathering in cases where the workplace evidence is required, but where it is not possible for the assessor to directly observe the learner at work. For example, in cases where the presence of an observer may compromise workplace safety or 
where work activities involve issues of patient confidentiality and privacy. The use of other people in collecting evidence is also a valuable strategy for collecting evidence of everyday performance rather than performance carried out as part of the formal assessment process. An RTO should first determine that it is appropriate to involve another party in the collection of evidence. An RTO must ensure the assessment processes lead to the collection of quality evidence. An RTO must provide sufficient guidance to both assessors and other parties by providing assessors with comprehensive guidance about, the, about selecting the per, best person persons to collect evidence, the appropriate person to observe or report on the performance of the learner is someone who is in a position to make a valid comment on the learner's performance, for example, a line manager. These materials must seek, solicit, allow for feedback that is directly related to the relevant units of competency or module on the learner's performance without necessarily replicating the performance criteria. Providing the other party with comprehensive information about the role in the evidence gathering process. This includes providing clear guidance and instruction on when, how, how often, and over what period of time the evidence is to be collected. The materials must explain the form in which the evidence is to be collected, for example, a structured supervisor report or an observation checklist that clearly identifies what is observed or performed. Obtaining conf confirmation that the other party understands their role in the process. This should include confirmation that the other party has agreed to participate in the evidence gathering process and that they understand when and how to collect evidence. Interpreting training package and accredited course information to be relevant to the other party. Units of competency and modules describe work outcomes. Each of these units modules describes a specific work activity, the conditions under which this work activity is conducted, and the evidence that may or must be gathered in order to determine whether the activity is being performed in a competent manner. Training package information. Training package information is written by guide assessors and the language is sometimes complex. Therefore, the behaviors and or knowledge that the other party is being asked to collect evidence of must be interpreted. The interpreted information should describe how a competent worker would perform the task described by the unit. This may include describing how a competent worker might meet standards in effect in the workplace, for example, standards relating to the speed or amount of work to be undertaken or other quality measures. Setting requirements for assessors in confirming the authenticity of evidence provided by, the by a candidate. That is, setting requirements for assessors to confirm that evidence is the candidate's own work. Where another party is involved in the collection of evidence, there should be instructions for assessors on how to verify this evidence to ensure that it is a true and accurate reflection of the candidate's skills. ASQA has developed a fact sheet about using third-party evidence to assess competence. This tool provides valuable guidance as to how to develop an assessment system that will lead to the collection of quality evidence. Using third-party evidence is different to using third, a third-party provider to provide services on behalf of your RTO. However, a third-party provider is an any party who provides services under your RTO's registration, including undertaking assessment of training products. An RTO does require a written agreement to use a third party party provider. Thanks for watching. This has been Brendan from Watto Training.